This isn't a wrestling promo. This isn't a cheap pop. And this sure isn't an apology. This is my life. My name is Priscilla Kelly. I'm a professional wrestler and I am from Atlanta, Georgia. The way I grew up, you're basically, you know, you're taught to be a housewife. You taught to clean, cook, take care of my little brother. Um, anything outside of that, I was kind of made uncomfortable to be myself. Didn't feel like I could dress how I wanted to dress, style my hair, or my makeup, or anything how I wanted it to be. It was always what my mom wanted me to look like and how my mom wanted me to act. And um, you know, I wasn't allowed to. I wasn't allowed to talk to boys. I wasn't allowed to date. I, you know, I didn't have any friends. Um, anything that I did have in life that was an activity, like, uh, you know, I had a gig working at haunted houses when I was younger, and everything that I had that was my own thing, my parents would kind of like insert themselves in and just make themselves a part of, and I never could just have my own thing with my own friends and. Um, really just have my own life and I felt like because of that I had a hard time developing social skills so growing up and just getting into wrestling it was like this girl who had never really had friends who had never really experienced life outside of her own house and her little brother and family just thrown into this world of people where she needs to talk and be social and um, interactive and it, it was like at times I couldn't even get words out because I never had the chance to develop those skills that you need in life. So in seventh grade, my parents decided to pull me out of school. They were just scared that I would, I don't know, I guess caught, get caught up in other kids and what they were doing and, you know, God forbid, kiss a boy or something. And uh, they pulled me out and it was like, School was the one place that I did have to socialize and meet people and have friends. And when my parents took me out of school, that was it. My only friend from there on was my brother. <laughs> and he at the time was, God, maybe four, maybe three or four years old, maybe five. And it, you know, it was hard because that was all I had was school to meet people. When I was 11 years old, I was sexually assaulted and anybody from the outside looking in would say, oh, that's an 11 year old little girl. No matter what the scenario was, that's, you know, that's a horrible thing. And that's a little girl that, you know, should have never been put in that position and never had to deal with that. But in my situation, the people in my family, in my culture, when they heard about it, they wanted to shame me. They made me feel dirty. They would call my phone from blocked numbers and call me a whore and then hang up in my face. When I went to family events, I would sit down at a table full of girls and they would all get up and leave. And even my own mother would make me feel like I was a horrible person and that everything was my fault. And there were times where my mom would just sit and say to me, what did I do so wrong to make you turn out this way? What did I do to deserve such a whore for a daughter? I was 11, 12, 13 during this time. And when you're that age, you don't realize how young you are, but when you are older and you look back, you realize you were a baby that should have been comforted and showed compassion and love. But instead, I felt alone and I felt overwhelmed. And it led to severe depression. It led to lashing out, um, a lot of self-mutilation and suicide attempts, thoughts, you know, just not wanting to live because every day that I lived, my mother looked at me with disgust and made me feel like I didn't deserve to be her daughter. And all of that ended up leading to me having to go to sell, um, mental rehabilitation centers. And it wasn't that I was messed up in the head. 
It wasn't that I had something wrong with me. It was that everybody around me had convinced me that I was in the wrong and that I was a horrible person and that I deserved to be unhappy because of what happened to me. And it made me go insane. It made me feel like I was lost. It made me feel like I didn't have a place on this earth and I just wanted to die every single day. It's funny because my dad was in and out of jail growing up, on and off drugs, meth, crack, alcohol, God knows what else. My mom was mentally unstable at times and it's like constantly being told what not to do and how to act and how to be and sit down and cross your legs and you speak when spoken to and you don't talk about certain things and you keep to yourself and you know get to get told all this stuff right from such an early age and to be overly sexually exploited from such a young age it's really funny to look at it now because my parents aren't even in my life my mom and dad got a divorce shortly after I turned 17 and um, pretty much after that, my mom lost her mind. I don't know if it was drugs. I don't know if it was her gastric bypass surgery, but my mom, I literally woke up one day and she was a different person. And through all the bad in my life, there were still moments of good memories that I had with my parents. Those Disney trips, going to different concerts, you know, going to Waffle House at 6 a.m. with my dad so that we could eat a waffle and just talk about life. There was a lot of good memories sprinkled in with all the bad. And when my mom lost her mind and, you know, eventually just disappeared out of my life and my dad, you know, he went to jail and it seemed like he was gone out of my life around the same time. It felt like I had, it felt like both of my parents had died. And at this moment right now, I haven't seen my mother in over a year. And every time I do see her, I don't feel like I'm talking to my mom anymore. I don't know who I'm talking to. And my dad is so strung out that even when I do talk to him, there's still bits of my dad's still in there, but it's still, it's like, I've grown so distant from, from him that it just feels uncomfortable. So at 14, my parents decided to do a reality TV show that was supposed to um, enlighten people to what the gypsy community is and how we lived and kind of kill off all those stereotypes. Um, but when we watched it back live on television, they had titled the show 14 and Looking for a Husband, which wasn't true at all. And what actually had happened was it was a Halloween party that TLC decided to make into this story that wasn't even true. And people still think that that's really how I lived and my parents were basically shopping me out for guys at 14. And it's not the case at all. Like, yeah, I was cleaning and taking care of my brother, like they said in the show, but it wasn't like this miserable life where I was like enslaved and, you know, being like sold as a bride or some weird thing, but you know, people think reality TV is real. Couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> the problem with that is now, even to this day, people come up to me thinking that either I was married at 14 or that's how I was raised and they feel so sorry for me, but it's like, None of that's true, but that show and that story is gonna be out for the rest of time. People can search it on the internet, and YouTube, and for the it's like the never ending story of people coming to me asking me, were you married? Was it hard living that lifestyle? We're so proud of you for not doing that anymore. And it's like, it's so hard to go to each and every person and say, yeah, it wasn't true. Yeah, it wasn't true. I started wrestling because I guess you could credit my brother for it. Um, he, he was obsessed with uh, pirates at the time, and my brother was the type that when he found something he liked, he became obsessive about it, very compulsive. And he picked up an Undertaker action figure thinking that it was a pirate. And uh, we had never watched wrestling, but I went, I did my research, um, and I had found out about 
this wrestler. And we didn't have cable at the time. And for Christmas, I bought my brother a, a DVD set all about The Undertaker. So for a few months until we had TV, all we watched was The Undertaker all the time. And we kind of just fell in love and became obsessed with it. And when you fast forward two years later after that, uh, my brother had a birthday party at a local wrestling show. And, you know, I was like, hey, like, how old do I need to be to start training? And they were like, we can start training you now. Um, and that was pretty much it. I started training and I, I never was an athlete. I never went to gymnastics. I never was in soccer, uh, you know, anything. I was just this girl that was just, you know, was taken out of school in seventh grade. And, you know, all I knew was playing with my brother, playing video games and, you know, music and whatever weird stuff that I was into that week. You know, it, I never was an athlete and I just jumped into wrestling and I was like, I'm going to do this.